Today's sermon is really quite simple. I'm going to show you how to help those in need. You are going to be in need just for a second. Doesn't look despicable. Um, some of you might think that that is a ridiculous thing to, to tell you how um, you should help somebody in need. Think, why would I even need a... Uh, uh, a message on how to help people, I'm going to quickly illustrate that there is an improper way to help people. And with that, we'll get to the right way of helping people. I brought gloves because I do not know where John has been. <laughs> I also brought, just in case, tongs. There is an improper way of helping people, and this happens to be the most improper way of helping somebody. If you were in need, what would you think of somebody who helped you in this way? Bye-bye. Go. Thanks, mister. Apple back? No, you can have that. An apple a day keeps a lawyer away. If you read that article that John was in, there was, he, he mentioned something about lawyer jokes, so uh, I had to throw that one in there. Um, that's, what I just did is really going to come to light here in just a second. I would imagine that you would all think that I was correct, that that would be an improper way of helping somebody because it would communicate quite a bit. The fact that... Uh, I used gloves and tongs and staying as far away from the person that I helped as definitely communicates a particular message. I want you to go to Luke 5. We're going to read verse 12. Through 16. There's a book that I'm reading right now. Actually, I finished it uh, about three weeks ago. I'm on to several other books, but I want you to consider uh, those of you who are in the ministry. Who's in the ministry? Who's in the ministry? There you go. It's called When Helping Hurts. When Helping Hurts. And one of the points that he made, probably about four or five chapters into it, is a lot of people suffer from what they call the God complex. That you think that you are God, and obviously that you're not. And, and, and when we hear that God complex, maybe images of pride come in, in, into mind where we can see somebody who, is, who has it made and they're walking down the street and they say, look at me, I'm, I'm so well. And we might think that he has an ego problem, a God complex. But the way that it is communicated in the book is that those people who help other people sometimes suffer from the God complex more than anybody. There's this idea that when you help somebody that you are needed. There's this idea that when you help somebody, you're the one who is providing for their needs. There's this idea that sometimes that comes in that says that because they are in need and I am not in need and I am the one who is giving this person something that they need, I'm better than them. And that is something that is ungodly and unbiblical. Philippians 2.3 says this, Consider, it's behind me, should be, do nothing out of selfish ambitions or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. I believe in other scriptures it actually says, Consider people better than yourself. Very powerful passage. A person in need does not need to be looked down upon. A person in need does not be need, to be need to be treated as if they are someone less than human. We don't need to wear gloves. Jesus never read, wore gloves. We read in the scripture this. While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who covered, was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord... If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand 
and he touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, do not tell anyone, but go yourself to the priest and offer sacrifices that Moses commanded you for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more. So the crowds of people came to him to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. I have three th quick things that I'm going to give you that, 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 that need to be incorporated in your ministry to every single person in need. You have the extreme that Hannah uh, Ellis, or told us about the third world country. Um, those, those children that are naked. I've been to, anyone else ever been to a third world country? Uh, you testify that it's like that in many different places. Uh, you also have needs here in America. You have needs in this church. You have needs with people that you meet on a daily basis. In your family, you have people who are in need. So this not only applies to the poorest of the poor amongst us, it applies to everyone that comes into our life, either be it through the church or be it through your own individual ministry. Three T's, if you will. The first one is touch. The leper told Jesus what he thought he needed to be healed. When I was, it was about two weeks ago, a lady came into my office and she wanted help on how to get a hold of her finances. She has money coming in, but it's, it's just in, it's, she's in bad shape. Um, she did lose her house, and, uh, well, she's being foreclosed on. Her power was going to be shut off. She has four kids in, in the house, and she came in, into my office, and she wanted to know how to, how to get a hold of her life, and, and, and often what I do is I try, to, I try to compartmentalize the problems, like this problem, and 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 I try to diagnose which is the most important part problem, and which problems can we shove over to somebody else so that we can focus on the main problem. And one of the things that I saw was, was this woman's power was going to get shut off, and we were only looking at $150 to $200. So I said, I tell you what, you and I, we're going to focus on these problems, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to a place. I want to, here's a list of locations. I want you to go to these places, and I want you to ask them for help with your power bill. And she said, I did, this one place right here. She started crying. She said, they asked me to fill out the paperwork, and I went in there and I filled out the paperwork as required. They said, I had to have it in by this particular date, and I, I did. I brought it in by this particular date, and when I went in there to, to get the help that, that they told me, I mean, they told me everything that I needed to do, and I did the things that I needed to do, and when I went in there, they said they, they never even had the paper, and they treated me like crap. I'll never forget the look in her face when she looked me in the eyes and tears are coming down her eyes. She says, I will never, ever ask a single person to help me again. I immediately got up. I brought somebody in. I said, tell this woman your story. As soon as she told the woman the story, we took care of the power bill. But what was interesting to me was she thought that she needed power. She thought she needed to keep her electricity on. And when she went somewhere to get help, she left because what she really needed was not there. And Hannah illustrated this more than anything that I, anything that I could possibly say today. As them little kids would come up to her and all they wanted was to touch. Don't help a single person if you will not touch them. The leper needed to be touched. Jesus recognized the leper's need and he touched him. 
Henny, you said something that I, I wish that we could spend about two hours just opening up and, 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 and it would really talk about the problems that we have in our society and our culture versus what's going on and, and, and what have you. You said that the, that the government in Haiti isn't doing a thing. They have what they want and then the people suffer right there. And we have something totally different right, right here where we do have a government that is trying to do what they can. And, and I don't care what you say about our government, our government really does try. But as a Christian, as somebody who is, who is every single one of us, we saw that about two, two Sundays ago, we're commanded by Jesus Christ to be a help to everyone. Remember 1 John 3, 17. Questions even the love of God inside your chest if you don't have compassion on those who need. Anyone who has material possessions but does not have compassion for those in need, how can the love of God be in that person? Questions whether or not the love of God is in you. You must have this right there. I pray. I personally believe, listen to me, that the government is our biggest competitor when it comes to helping people in need. And you know what the government lacks? And I do, I fought, I fought for this government. It's the ability to touch. The church must be willing to reach out and hug somebody. When you are in need for whatever reason, I don't care what it is, even friends that come up to you, the minute they say, I'm in need, it's as if we put these stupid gloves on. And it's as if we get these tongs on, as if there's something wrong with them. I had a man come up to me the other day, and I'll tell you, I know that he was hurting. I know that he was in need. I know that, I know. It's been over a year. Every time I saw him, I go up to his face, and I'm like, something's wrong with you. What's wrong with you? Tell me. And he's like, nothing's wrong. Absolutely nothing is wrong. I was like, just tell me what's wrong so I know how to pray with you. There's absolutely something wrong. I just know it. I just know it. Yesterday, I, I, I ran up to Neem. I literally ran trying to keep my, my body in, in, in girly figure style. And, and I got up to Neiman's to buy the pizza rolls. I know, that doesn't make sense. The pizza rolls work for me. So I got up the pizza rolls and I came out and it was just like one after another people were coming out. And then I saw this guy and he came, he came up to me. Could have been a gal. And he walked up to me and he says, you've been asking about what's wrong with me. I say, yeah. So well, I want you to pray for me. It's like, what's up? I have a disease. And I need you to pray for me. And it's not a contagious disease. But as soon as he said that, and I had known for a year and a half, and I'm in the ministry, I help people. As soon as he said this, it was like a wall started to be created. It was as if there was a barrier between me and him. I don't know if it was self-protection, self-preservation. But knowing this mess, I, I, I did. I quickly just kind of mentally pushed that wall down and I went over and I grabbed him and I, and I just held him or her. I can't do nothing for that disease. But I touched them. We're human beings. And when we are in need, the one thing we don't get is touch. And Jesus saw the leper, and the leper said, please heal me. And Jesus came over to him. And this is something very, very wild back in those days. I mean, he'd have to yell, unclean, unclean, everywhere he went. But Jesus walked over to him, and he said, I'm willing. So the first thing is touch. The second thing, though, is teach. Luke 5.14. We do have that up there. Skip the Galatians passage. Luke 5.14. 
And then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourselves to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. The second thing that I see that Jesus did was he taught and we teach. You know what I love about this passage? Jesus did not go and do it for him. And he could have. I mean, Jesus was, at, at this time, he was a teacher. And there were some miracles behind him. Jesus could have said, let's go down, you and I, right now. We're going to go down, and we're going to talk to the priest, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vouch for you. All right, because lepers, they were, they, were, they were sinners because God cursed them for whatever reason. He said, I'm going to go up, I'm going to go up there, and we're going to walk in there right now, and I'm going to point out, look, look, this guy's clean. This guy's been healed right there. He said, this is what you need to do. You need to go, and you need to show yourself before the priest and do what you're called to do. Galatians 6.5 says this, everyone should carry their own load. That is not for the benefit of the church. It is for the benefit of the individual. Mm. I don't see that passage, and I wanted to read that. Hebrews. I want to read you a text real quick. Apparently I need a Bible with tabs on it because it takes me way too long to get there. Hebrews 2, 5 and on says this, It is not to angels that he, God, has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, what is man, human, that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than angels. You crowned him with glory and honor, and you put everything under his feet. In putting everything under, under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to him. You are not an animal, and I don't care what evolution teaches. You are something special. You are a human being. You are created in the image of God. You are male. You are female. God took the world and he created it for his glory, but he put everything under you that it exists to keep you alive. And he says that part of being human is this. Part of being made in the image is this. You're to do stuff for yourself. The coldness of government sometimes is that we say, or, or of American cultures, we say, do it yourself, figure it out for yourselves, and if you don't, there must be something dysfunctional about you. But the beauty of the church is that every single one of us need to be about showing other people how it is to do life right. How to be a better parent, how to be a better spouse, how to be a better steward of the resources God gave you, how to be a better worker, how to be productive in life, how to master the ground that is beneath you, to show them that right there. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. We best help people when we show them that they can do it on their own. I'm about to give you a powerful illustration. The person who, who agrees to this illustration will have a hundred bucks. Are you ready? Here are the requirements. You have to know that saving is important. Who knows that saving is important? 
Okay? One of the things that we teach in, is the baby steps in uh, the Dave Ramsey class is you should have, uh, depending on how much you make, baby step one, $500 to $1,000. Okay? $500 to $1,000, baby step one. So the second part of this requirement is that right now, currently, you don't have enough in your emergency fund. Okay? I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in a second because this might be a little bit humbling. There, we got one, Alice, maybe you. The third thing you have to admit is this, publicly, that in the last three, four weeks, you have struggled putting money into your emergency fund. It's just hard to save, given the, 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 the world in which you live right now. So if you, if you know that saving is important, don't have the required amount of saving in your saving account right now, and you're struggling, at least in the last four weeks, that over the last four weeks you have not been able to do it, or not enough, I want you to come up here. I need you as a volunteer. Somebody. You're going to get 100 bucks. You want to come, Alice? Huh? I'm, I'm not going to hurt you. Do you fit those requirements? Pretty much? Come up here. This is a dangerous illustration because I don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> and it could fail totally. I can tell you, though, I did this Thursday, and uh, I told him within seven days he'd have the $100. And he, no, I, with him I said $200. Um, I met with him Saturday, and he had the money. So are you ready? Okay. <laughs> you need a pencil and a pen. Here, paper. Can use my Bible. Who's got a pen or a pencil? That's a heavy Bible. Pen, pencil, there you go. Ready? Okay. What do you have right now that you can sell? All I can sell. Yeah, what do you have right now that you can sell? <laughs> Little things. Name some things that you have that you can sell. Just three things. You can even write it down. You have to sell. Okay. Three things. Okay, you got some of them? Got some things? What else? Kitchen items. Kitchen items? You sell kitchen items? So, anything else? You got anything in your shed? You have anything in your shed? Why would they want that? Well, do you have anything in your shed? Yeah. Okay. You have some things in the sheds that you can get rid of? That's probably, probably good. Do you have anything in your basement right now? Anything in your basement? What do you got in your basement? Some weights up. Okay. Wow. You don't want to get rid of that. I mean, John wouldn't be the masculine... It's not ours. Oh, so you're going to sell somebody else's stuff. Yeah. Don't know if that, okay. What do you have in, um, uh, let's see, what do you have in your living room that you just really, really don't use, but it's always there? Uh, One thing. I have a box of extra clothes. There you go, box of extra clothes. What else? because I'd rather just give it away. Yeah, I know you did. In fact, you gave a bunch of clothes to Dana about a few weeks ago. You said, do whatever you want, so she sold it for you, and you have $67 waiting for you any time that you want to pick it up. You gave it away, but we went ahead and sold it for you and so that you have it in your savings account. You just don't know it yet. So actually, I'm going to raise it up to 167 So what else do you have that you, could, that you would just give away? That I would just give away? The giveaway that you can sell right now. Books. Books. Wait, books? Okay, no, that's fine. Sell. Okay, real quick, how, tell me a couple ways that you know right now that you can sell these right now. How can you sell those stuff? How can you sell it? Post them on. Right now. Po post them on Craigslist. What else? <laughs> nope, not you, buddy. This is her. What else? One other thing. Newspaper. Okay, newspaper. How about free, any free sites or any free things that you could post it on besides Craigslist? The only free site I know, you have to give it away free. Yeah, okay, so you can't do that. Um, is there anything you could do the next week that, that any way that you can, anything else? Post a sign, garage sale. Garage sale, okay. All right. Okay. One other question, is there any side job that you can do in the next seven days that you know right now could get you just a few bucks? 
Okay. We're actually trying to sell a house. Okay. Yeah. If we could sell that house, man. We sell that house. We would be so happy. Okay. Did I give her any information? Did I give her one piece of information? All I did was show her real quick that there's resources, okay? That, that was part one. Now I'm going to do part two. Next Sunday when you come here, you're going to come up here and you're going to tell this congregation whether or not the things that you know you said you've got to get rid of, knowing that you know how to get rid of, you're going to come up to this congregation you're going to tell them, yes, I did it or no, I failed. Okay. <laughs> And yes, you can take that piece of paper. Okay. I introduced accountability in it. And I'll call you. You, you know what you're going to have? $100. You. <laughs> because you can do it. Yeah. Go ahead. I could have given her the $100. I could give her the $100. Actually, I can't because I don't have, so I need to do the same things. You would be surprised the number of times people come up to me and say, I need this, and instead of just quickly doing the thing where I put on my glove and my tongs, it's like, here, get out of my face, get out of my presence. I just sit down and I ask them questions. I ask them about the resources. I ask them about the ground. There's thorns on the ground. There's thistles on the ground. I understand it's hard. I understand that it's a challenge, but I ask them that. And I ask them, what are the ways that you can clear that ground? And they give me the answer almost each and every time. The point is they have it right. Right there. All they need to do is feel empowered to do it themselves. There, in that book, you will, you, will, you will hear these words. Never ever do something for somebody that they can do for themselves. And of course, this is talking about helping those in need. Um, if I, I, There's one minister I know ever since he, he became a minister... That one, one person in the congregation says, I can't give. I own a lawn mowing business. I'm going to mow your yard every time it needs, once, maybe twice a week. You need to bless people like that. There's nothing wrong with that. You need to be a giver. You need to just, for no reason at all, just come up to somebody and says, here, I want you to have this. There's nothing wrong with that. But when somebody is in need, one of the things that they struggle with is this. They don't feel like a human being. The way God made them. And you teach them. You have this ability. Let's do this. Third thing. And I love this one. 514 again. Together. Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourselves to the priests and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded you for the cleansing as a testimony of them. What I love about this text is that the unclean would now be the teacher. And I can't illustrate this more than the way Hannah already had. Hannah, as much good as you did in Haiti. Maybe, maybe they'll remember the block. Given their circumstances, they might not. You may have made a huge difference in their life. Given the severity of the condition, Maybe not a lot. But you are changed. And from this day forward, you will never be the same. Because it wasn't you that went to be teach the teacher. But you went to be Taught to see children line up and sing the wonderful songs. To remind you how great is our God.
Your obedience to the command to help those in need is not for their benefit. You are not better than them. You are not whole yet. And each one of you must walk with one another together. If you think that your job is to be in the ministry, to give somebody they can't do for themselves, or to, to teach them something they can't learn for themselves, you don't understand that first passage that we, that, 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 that we just quoted. Consider everyone better than yourself. Quite frankly, you're not whole yet. And there's a lot for you to learn, and there is a lot for them to teach you. I can tell you right now that I work with people who are struggling at the bottom end. And I'm going to tell you that I got, you got a socioeconomic, so that's a big word for how much money you bring in, what you can do, what kind of wealth. The lowest level versus the highest level. Now, I, I, I will say that the rich give more money because they have more money to give. But proportionately speaking, the bottom rung give the most. The more you make when you come into my office, the quicker you are willing to give up your tithe and your offering to get yourself out of the mess. The lower you make, the more likely you are to give up food. I kid you not. Before you give up what you're giving. Why? Because faith is all they got. Food will come. Jesus said that too, by the way. Why do you worry about tomorrow? It's coming. Hannah mentioned in Haiti, they, they practice food too, so they can get something. Unfortunately, we know this. It's a false god. That's one of the reasons we need to be about Christ and show them that the great God of this universe does care for them. You know what, regardless of, he loves them so much that regardless of the fact, he does, he still gives, even though they give homage to another. It's just amazing. But that's something I learn, and that's something you learn. I'm ending right now, and I'm going to pray here in about 30 seconds, okay? I'm going I'm to tell you what we're working on right now. Um, don't laugh at this because it sounds funny. I know that we, we're trying to work out a deal that maybe in a year from now we have a ministry team from Farmer City, First Baptist Church Farmer City, that goes to Jamaica. And when you think of Jamaica, it's what? Vacation, party time. Well, there are two Jamaicas. There is a third world Jamaica. And then there is the tourism you won't be going to the tourist area. We're working on that. We're going to hope to make that. We've got, we're, it's going to take a year to develop, but we're doing what we can there. But we have ministry opportunities here every single time. And I'm not asking you to pray about that and to consider it so that you give something to somebody else, but I'm asking you to pray about it and, and, and volunteer because you will never be whole unless you learn to walk as Jesus did, and that sacrificially. That's putting other people's needs before yours and even giving up your needs to help meet theirs. To reach out and touch somebody. To take the time to teach somebody so that you both or you all can do this together let us pray father you have blessed every single one of us with the testimony that hannah has given i thank you that you are working powerfully in her life and i just can't wait to see father the the maturity, the mature growth that comes out of her obedience. And I know that you've blessed people there in Haiti. I know that there's blessings that she'll never know. Not until that great day when she arrives in, in your kingdom. Will those little kids come up to her, tell her about the testimony that they did, or that she gave, or about the sacrifice that she did. about touching 
not only their lives, but just them. You've blessed us with that testimony. Father, may you receive all the glory in all that we do, all of the glory in everything that is done through this congregation, this church. May honor and glory be given to you and you alone. It is in the precious blood I pray. Amen.